Hey friends, let's talk about something real. About the ones who are meant to be there for us, for real. Our parents, our guardians, the ones who are meant to care. But sometimes they get too busy and we feel like they're not there. We crave their time, their attention, their ears. But often we feel like we're competing with their fears. Their fears of not providing, of not being enough. When all we need is their presence, their love and their touch. Just as God promised us his presence, his love, and his grace, we need our parents to do the same for us in this place. We need them to put off their phones, turn away their screens, and treat us like we really matter and we're not just some dream. Let's build a relationship that's real, that's true, one that's built on love, on trust, on me, and on you. Let's make a change starting today. Let's ask for their attention in a loving way. Please join us for our series on parental attention. We'll be discussing how to deal with parental attention, lack, and even excess of it. Bye-bye. Good morning, church. And my name is Pearl, and I'm here with... Okay, so we're going to be talking on parental attention. So we'll be looking at how it can affect a teenager's life. And the fact that we are teenagers ourselves means we'll be able to relate to some of the issues that you might be facing which means because like now should i say it's a small world there are some things that we might be going through that is um, that will be similar to you so you'll be able to relate and flow well with us so we'll be talking on how you can cope without parental attention and even if the parental attention is too much that it becomes pressure so before we go into that let's just say a quick word of prayer father in jesus name amen in my name of Jesus. Amen. Father Lord, we thank you, Lord, for today. We thank you, Lord, for allowing us to be here. It's only by your grace and by your favor that we're here today. And Father Lord, I thank you for everyone that is watching this. Thank Lord, I you, know Jesus. that it's not that it's not by mistake that they are seeing this today. Father Lord, I pray that you help them to get whatever they are meant to get in the name of Jesus. Amen. And by the end of this, your will and only your will will be done in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Father, for us to our prayers. Thank you. For in Jesus' name we've prayed. Amen. Okay, so let's just welcome the choir, then we'll get back.
Okay, so welcome back and the praise and worship was wonderful. Yeah. So what we're talking on is parental attention. Parental attention. So first of all, what's parental attention? So parental attention is the care, support and direction provided by parents to their children, you know, to help them navigate life in a way that will be, you know, make life easier for them. So Nini, what is like your own definition of okay, description? Okay, so I would describe um, parental attention as the availability of a parent in a child's life. Okay, so like how much they are present. Yes, yeah, present. that's too much also too much. Yeah. So now when we say, now we're also going to be looking at lack of parental attention, but when we say lack of parental attention, it might also be the parenting style. It doesn't always mean that the parent is absent from the child's life. So we'll be discussing like, let's say at most four parenting styles that might that might give the illusion that it's lack of parental attention so it's the first one i'm going to talk on is overbearing like now when a child says why did you tell me to wash the place or something like that and you're like because i said so that is a very popular one because i said so or they say um why am i doing this is because i am your seeing i've done this before i know how it is so it would probably be the same for you so sometimes if we have if that is the only thing they use to raise us up we really have we won't really make decisions on our own because it's also a kind of parental style where, where they feel like I know best. I yeah. know, you know, I'm the, I can make the best decision for you. So they don't really feel at the point, they don't really feel the need to make decisions. So anything that pops up, whatever my mom or my dad says, it's yes. okay, I'll just go by it. But, or whatever authority figure, anyone that is older than me, like let's say I go to university now and I have that kind of parental style and my roommate is older and says I should do this and they say because I said so like that. I'm older than you, you should do it. Even if it was a joke at first and I do it, they can say, mm, I can easily be getting taken advantage of. Yeah. And I might want to please that person the same way I want to please my, you know, my parents, parents, something like that. It happens often. It happens often. So that kind of parenting style is can affect the child in some ways because you'll be hard it'll be hard for you to make some kind of decisions so there's another kind of parenting style which is um authoritative yeah so um this parenting style just is basically giving room for the child to make decisions to make mistakes and yeah. be corrected for the mistakes they made but it's also kind of like a dictatorship kind of um parental yeah, style and i know that most teenagers do not like this kind of style no. like for example if i want to clean my room and then my mom comes and tells me go and clean your room the joy or the passion or the Everything willingness yeah the willingness to go and clean my room just goes away so i feel like many teenagers can relate to that yes. kind of situation yeah so another kind now that kind of parental attention which is authoritative is actually good because you are allowed to make your own mistakes yeah. so after a while although you don't like what is happening you have after a while you don't even remember that you didn't like it. you just see that everything is going well and sometimes it might not even trace back that this is the reason why i'm like this today or this is the reason why i can i'm independent so yeah. because they want their children to be independent but at the same time they don't want their children to make mistakes so they are kind of like restrictive or not restraining which means they set boundaries but they don't allow them to you know do things that they know will be bad there's something like that so the last one is um neglect maybe yeah neglected so um it's it's just as simple as it sounds neglected which means the parents the parental figure is not really there yeah. or they are there but they just just don't pay attention to their children or whatever they do yeah something like that so that kind of parental attention it can you know since you're not getting attention from your parents sometimes little details matter yeah let's say i do i'm very small and i do a drawing i draw my mom and i show her the drawing and she's like yeah yeah, yeah it's fine it's good yeah. it's good something like that when I was small, I was very emotional. If my mom doesn't tell me bye before she goes to work, I'll just sit down in one place and be very sad. Now, but sometimes, most times she tells me bye, but because I was so used to and when she doesn't and when she forgets, it makes me sad. But for a child that they don't do it at all. Yeah. You know, so at the point you'll be like, nah, if, you're, if your parent travels, you really dare, you don't even, you won't even notice if your parent yeah. is there or not. So those kind of little details have um, matters. Like let's say open day, comes and your parent doesn't come maybe it's your driver that comes to you know pick up your results it can can happen kind of you might feel like like it's as if they are not there because most times your your um you see other people's parents will come and be like your friends will be like see my friends though so you yeah, see my friends but then again introducing your friends to like the person that is taking you home sometimes you might feel you know ashamed so that kind of things is there are small details but let's when you think back on it you're like 
Yeah, it will give you love for your parents, but then when they are not there, it might be a problem. It might be small, but then they still make a difference. So I want to talk on someone that has this kind of problem. So I think I can share the story with you guys today. So his mom was raped. So his mom doesn't, he doesn't know who his father is. And I'm not sure she knows who her husband, the father of the child is. So, I, so it was because she was very young. So it was the grandma that raised the child up. So maybe sometimes the mom would just come visit him. But then again, when he was small, he didn't really notice this something. Yeah. What is he doing with life? It was just a happy child, you know, watching cartoon, the yeah. normal thing, the true thing children do. So then, like after a while, things will start to change, especially when you're entering this. adolescence. Yeah. Exactly. Teenage life. Teenagehood. <laughs> things will change, especially that open day side. Let's say parents will come. Where is your parents? Let's say everybody's bringing the, you know, that like now your mom is young. She should be looking so sweet, you get. But then it's your grandma that is coming to, you know, pick up your results and you're like, and you're like, your friends are like, is that your mom? You say, no, that's not my mom, that's my grandma. Okay, so where's your mom? Where's your dad or oh, your dad? Are they coming? And then you won't know what to say. So that kind of thing. It might make you feel sad. You won't yeah. feel like you belong. And at this kind of stage, you always, you know, yeah. you want to be, you want to belong, you know, yeah. want to try and fit in. So he said he had that kind of problem while growing up. And then since he didn't really get that kind of attention Especially. at home, because even with that, these families, their members, I see, you know, putting the blame on him yeah. because he is the mistake, as they said this. And, you know, he always lived his life thinking he was, he was the problem. Mm -hmm. He was the problem that his mom is ashamed of him or stuff like that. They always, you know, rain insults, insults from him for some reasons, I'm not sure. But I think you guys already get the picture I'm trying to paint because some people might be going through this. More people that we think are going through this yeah. are actually going through things. So I think it's important that we talk on this. So he wanted to fit in. So he joined like, you know, bad groups or the stereotypical things that they say people without parents do. Yeah. Drugs, smoking, the stereotypical thing is what happened. So he even went to jail while in secondary school. He has never reached any year. But then in jail, that is where the shifts happened because he didn't get that attention he was seeking from his family members or his parents because they were, you know, absent. But while in jail, at least he was going to church, yes. So he had he had um, an idea of who Jesus was. So he kind of was like a form of rehabilitation because it was not like the regular jail. He's too young to go to, you know, like juvenile. So he had a form of rehabilitation. That is where his relationship with God grew. And then there's a Bible part that I think I love so much. It says, can a mother forget the child in her womb? He said, yes, the mother can forget the child or not care about that child. But I, the Lord, will not forget you. So that is a reassurance that even if your parents might not be there with you, yeah. God is there. He said, I will not forget you. The beloved of the Lord rests on his shoulder. And plenty of times in the Bible, he calls us his beloved. So he said, the Lord, I will not forget you. So I think that is one of the verses that he might have used. I'm not sure, but that is one of the verses that I use that even if no one cares about me, I know there's someone that cares because he repeats and repeats and I know that it's true. That's where my faith comes from. I know that it's true. So now, let me go back to the story. Let me not deviate or waste too much time. So yeah, when he came out of jail, he, he, the pressure became worse because you know, you have sports finished, you get, you have sports finished. Where is your life? Your life is already useless. What, what can you do with your life again? You are, you're already, you are this small. You're already doing all these stuff like that. But then he knew that I wasn't called for this. Every single one of us is called. He said, I knew you, bef I knew you, I know you by your name before you were born. I know you by your name. So he knows that he has something better to do in this life. So he doesn't really care if anybody, whatever people are saying, he doesn't, Whatever people say about me, I don't care. But Lord, how do you see me? It's what, how you see me that matters, not how people see me. Because you're the only one. You're the author and the finisher of my faith. I just want to tell you that if you're going through something like this, know that God is there. He is there. He is present. Even if that situation is not looking good at the time, but just know that everything will work out. So to the glory of God today, he's, he's doing very well. I think he's doing sound or something like that. He's, I saw a story online, actually. And it says it was okay to share a story. That's why I wanted to use the story today. So, Nini, do you have any kind of story that can relate to what we're talking about? Actually, today? yes. I have a friend. She's one of my very close friends. Um, um, her parents had her when they were in the university. So, she calls herself a mistake. Yeah. Um, 
her parent, her dad left her when she was nine and then relocated and they didn't hear from him again and then you know the absence of her father figure in her life made her to do a lot of things like blaming the whole thing on her mom like why did you have me in the first place what do you do and at the age of 14 she was beating up her mom you know hitting her shouting at her mom and then she started seeking validation from boys because she just the absence of that father figure in her life made her to look for it somewhere else so she started you know seeking validation from boys you know going going to miss them you know just yeah yeah so and up to and her father came back at the age of 14 again and started putting bad things in her mind and then started blaming everything on her mom so which made her anger towards her mom worse and this kind of person she's already you know broken yeah and i feel like we shouldn't wait till we've gotten to that point of you know getting broken before we realize that like you said yeah. he's there he knows you he yeah. he understands you and then to think that there is negative and parental attention and there's positive sometimes the parental attention might be too much yes and then sometimes it might be too small so yeah but i pray that the lord will help us and then yeah. we should just rely on god at all times yeah so then like now if the pressure is too much okay like now if the parental pressure is too much that it turns into pressure and no longer um parental attention so you don't really see the reason why they are doing what they are doing is like over controlling or something like that i need you to you know shut down those voices and make it the background noise let's make it the background noise and let god's voice be what is playing so shut everything else let that be in the background you see no what is happening but you're not focusing that on you're not focusing on that you're focusing on jesus you get what i'm saying so, yeah, so um, let's shut those uh, the noise out okay so let's just say a quick word of prayer to mm. you know help in jesus name amen in the name of jesus it's an honor of ages once give you all the glory amen. we thank you lord for your word that you have passed out today thank you lord for the people watching thank you lord for for your spirit that has flown we thank yes, you lord jesus. for for speaking your word to them in jesus name amen. Father, we pray that everything we have said it shall help it to manifest in their lives in jesus name amen. and lord we pray that those who think they are they're having too much prayer attention too little we pray that you shall just make yourself known to them in jesus name amen. oh lord just be there in their lives and just manifest in their lives so they know that you are there making make yourself known to them in jesus name amen. in jesus name, my prayer amen yeah okay so next week we're still going to continue on our topic parental attention. attention yeah so make sure to join us yeah. and then we'll see you thank you